Once upon a time, there was a man who invented chess. The king was so pleased, he offered the man a reward. The man, who was very wise, told the king that he would only want one grain of wheat for the first square of the chessboard, two for the second, four for the third, and so on, doubling the amount for each square of the chessboard. The king said yes, and at the end of the game he had to abdicate, because he had no more grains of wheat to pay his debt. That is the nature of exponential growth, and our chessboard is planet Earth. Forty years ago, a report by a team of scientists from the MIT shook the world. They designed and ran the first global computer model ever, suggesting humanity should adapt to the physical limitations of planet Earth in order to avoid overshoot and collapse. During the last year, a group of us at MIT have been looking at the exponential growth of our global social and economic system. We've been led to five basic conclusions. There are physical limits to growth, which, given current trends, are very likely to be encountered even during the lifetime of our children. This growth is going to stop. It must stop, and it will stop. Second, the most likely outcome of running into these limits, if we continue to ignore them, is that we'll overshoot those limits and collapse. I think that many people have found a new way of making fools of themselves in not recognizing that there are limits to human expansion. We appear to have a viable alternative to this outcome, one in which population and material production could be brought into balance with a finite environment and with our resources. We have learned that more is not necessarily better. But even our great nation has its recognized limits. Fourth conclusion is that it's realistically going to take 50, 100 years or more to reach that alternative in an orderly fashion. We believe then and now there are no limits to growth and human progress when men and women are free to follow their dreams. And finally, every year we delay decreases our ultimate options. Their report was published in a book entitled The Limits to Growth, which turned out to be the most controversial environmentalist bestseller of all time. There can be no doubt what one subject has aroused most controversy among scientists during the past 12 months. I mean, of course, the prospect of doom for mankind because of pollution, overpopulation, overuse of resources. Well, I think that this, the, the conclusions of this study are completely wrong. If you check uh, what happens if you vary all your assumptions together, then uh, I understand from the uh, Science Policy Research Unit at Sussex, who have actually been checking your model, the catastrophe disappears altogether. That's interesting. I spent all last Friday down with the Science Policy Research Institute. They didn't, uh, they didn't indicate that. <laughs> well, um, you know, this is developing debate. Who spoke to them last? I spoke to them this morning. <laughs> After having spent 40 years fighting for their message, the authors gathered where the limits to growth saga began. Which options do they think we have today? Forty years ago, it was still theoretically possible to slow things down and come to an equilibrium. Now that's no longer possible. We are coming into a period of uncontrolled decline. We need now to start focusing specifically on the issue of resilience. If we go through this period of decline without foreknowledge, without preparation, I fear that it will strip away many of our fundamental values. The need is for early and strong action to avoid the problems that are already here and that will get worse in the future. The horrible fact is that democracy and capitalism will not solve those problems. We do need a fundamental paradigm shift in the area of governance. So it's the national and international governance uh, thing, which is what one ought to be debating when one is looking ahead. Personally, I'm an optimist. Personally, I believe in the brilliance of human beings. Um, 
the past 40 years makes you doubt it a little, but uh, I do believe humans are brilliant. I don't consider myself any better than any other human being, but I have lived for 20 years with these global models. And I can see, I, I, I instinctively understand the global results of personal actions that I take. And I know what kind of world I want to live in. I don't want to live in a collapsing world. I don't want to live in a world, as Jürgen says, it's getting grayer and grayer. And it costs more and more and more to maintain even a decent standard of living. I want to live in a sustainable world where there is no poverty, no hunger, and no erosion of the Earth's resources. According to the Limits to Growth authors, the environmental and economic crisis we are going through are part of the same global crisis. They don't hold the truth, and they have different views on the future, but we should listen to them for the sake of new generations.